Hello, this is the basic texture mapping tutorial and we're going to talk about applying textures to your models. Uh, we're going to learn how to use the attribute editor to create materials, use the hypershade to view and work with shading materials, and apply a texture to a surface. Texture mapping is a method for adding surface characteristics to a model such as an image or a procedural texture. You're going to learn what that is in a minute here. Um, let's set our project folder. And I'm assuming you've already downloaded the demo files. So let's set that to the demo folder. And we're going to open the three shapes texture. And we don't need to save the current scene, probably. <coughs> And if these extra windows open up, you can just change it back to the perspective view for now. So without textures, the objects would just be one flat color, and that would be rather boring. So we're going to talk about how to do a little bit more than that with the surfaces. Okay, about procedural textures, you can do quite a few things to a surface of an object to give it some texture procedurally, and it will be um, something that generates uh, by Maya. And essentially, um, the way it works is through math, and you don't you don't really need to know the math at all, but um, you do have to have kind of an idea of how they work. So. <coughs> um, Let's give it a blend material, and we'll go assign new material, blend. And what we're going to do when we add a texture here is we're going to use these little checkerboards next to whichever attribute you're adding a texture to. Um, for now, the most obvious is going to be color, but you can actually add a texture to most any attribute here, so we'll get more into that later. But if you open this up, you'll see a number of different um, textures, and basically anything that's not file is a procedural texture in most cases, or PSD file, that's an image, file is an image. The rest of them pretty much are procedural textures. So, um, let's just look at 2D textures. And there are a lot of things here that might require a little knowledge. You can just kind of experiment with them and see what you get. Um, I'll give you one example. And um, this is a fractal texture. Okay, and just for another example, I will show you the checkerboard texture, and that wasn't supposed to happen. Let's go back a step here. Okay, so um, for another example, I'll show you the checkerboard texture, and to get rid of an existing texture, um, you'll see that this has changed to um, this icon which indicates that there's a node downstream and if you click on that you'll get to that fractal node. I want to get rid of the fractal so I'm going to right click on that node or okay the the word color I'm going to right click on the word color and go to break connection and that just gets rid of the fractal texture or whatever was there so I'll click on checker and that's what I wanted and that's what a checkerboard looks like And there's some more examples. Um, for example, uh, some 3D textures. They are similar to a 2D texture, but mathematically different. Um, and I'm not really getting into the math, but um, they're just mathematically different in the way that they work. Um, and that's all you need to know for the moment. But uh, one example is Crater. So. This is how you apply procedural textures to your models.
Now, um, textures can be nested within other textures or in a sense layered, kind of like you would layer Photoshop textures, uh, technically different but conceptually the same. So um, just for an example, like I could set the color to a checker and then you'll see um, attributes for your checkerboard color. For example, you could set the color for the white checks and you can set the color for the black checks but you can also put another texture in there as you can see so I could put um, oh just say a ramp texture in there or something a little bit more visually obvious maybe go back to crater because you can really see that crater texture so you can see how all the black checks now have the crater texture. And it can go on like this for as long as you want it to. Um, you can continually just create textures and um, nest more textures in them. So next step is mapping an image. So let's select this object and you'll notice that this is a NURBS cube which means it's going to be just four, it's actually just four NURBS planes. That's four, what am I talking about? Six. So you want to either turn on hierarchy selection mode or press the up arrow when you select it. And let's assign a new material. And we'll choose Lambert. And for the color, we're going to choose um, I don't want you to just click on file. I want you to right click on file and go to create as projection and I'll tell you why in a minute. Now um, the first thing you're going to want to do with your projection is pick a projection type and since we're applying this to a cube we're going to make it cubic and then fit to bounding box and usually that's enough not always, but usually. And then we got to go to the File to node. We have to actually <clears throat> pick an image. So you want to click on that little folder next to image name. And um, we can pick from any of the images that are here. And obviously you can also make up your own. There's three shapes texture dot IFF. And here's testpattern.png, so you get the idea. You can see that it's now been mapped to that um, square, so to that cube. So um, sometimes you do have to adjust the placement a little bit. You can see where the wrap is getting a little bit wonky here. So if you have to move this around a little bit, um, you can use the interactive placement tools to do that. And if you screw anything up, just press Command Z or Control Z to undo it, or just Z. Like I said, fit to bounding box is a start. It doesn't necessarily give you everything you need. A lot of times it's fine, but not always. So the place 3D texture node is where you will do your adjustments on the placement of that, of that file. Okay, and let's try one more with the uh, cylinder. And I'm gonna select the cylinder and press the up arrow just to make sure I've got it all selected, or if you like, switch to hierarchy selection mode. Either way you want to do it. And let's right click and assign new material. And we'll go with Fong. And under the color node, I am going to right click on the file and choose create as a projection. And this is going to be a cylindrical projection. 
might have to go back to the projection node and cylindrical is what we want and let's do a fit to bounding box that didn't do anything fit to bounding box fit to group bounding box ah yes I get it now okay and we will go ahead and pick the texture you can you um, can go back and forward with these with these two nodes. These are input and output nodes, these two buttons here. We can go over to File 3 and choose Test Pattern. Okay, and then I'm going to move the projection to where it's a little bit more centered. sized up properly. Okay, so that's not exactly perfect, but kind of gives you an idea of how it works. Okay, I'm going to show you something here. I'm just going to clear out the scene and, I don't know, make a couple objects. I'll just, well, let's, let's start with a cube. I think cube will be the easiest for what I want to do. And I'm going to assign a material. I'm going to put gonna put the file texture on there as a projection. And I want to just hopefully try to help you understand what the projection is doing. It's acting like a projector, literally like a projector, and the projection type planar I think will be the easiest to help you understand because that's what real projectors do. Um, so I'm going to fit to bounding box and then so interactive placement. So here's our projector and the screen is going to be like this. <coughs> If I go and put a file on here, there we go. Texture maps was turned off. So it projects like it's pointed at the projector, like the projector is like maybe right about here. I'll put a little object there to that we can pretend is the projector. So there's our projector. So like if you could imagine standing in front of a, a real projector and the, the image was on and projecting on a cube, you can see how it would kind of, like if you turn the cube to the side, like the projection is pointed right at the you know, whatever is pointed at the projection. So, if that makes sense, hopefully, um, that's how a projection works. And the reason that I'm showing you this for this unit is because it's easier than UV unwrapping, which is a whole different can of worms, um, which we will get into in uh, 3D Animation 2, but not this, not this class. Uh, unless you want to. You can feel free to look it up and find out about um, UV unwrapping. Let's get rid of that and I'm going to create a new object. Let's assign a new material. So far I have been using uh, projections to um, size it down to the size of the object, but you can also create a file and we can create it as a texture. And really that's just the same thing as just clicking on file, left clicking on file, creates it as a texture. Um, this will use the UV mapping, which is uh, with primitive objects it's already all set up so 
Um, anything beyond that, though, which you shouldn't be using a whole lot of primitive objects, it's going to be um, it's going to be kind of a bear. So I'm going to turn on mirror U and V, and then under the coverage. Like if I set it to quarter coverage, nope, uh, that's wrong. Full coverage, repeat UV. There we go. Repeat UV four times or eight times. So now we've got this object that is repeating its um, texture. So, and the fundamental difference between this and projection is right here. If I move the object around, it's on the object. It's not projecting to the object.